Hello guys, welcome back to Oxangel RC. I am excited today because I'm finally reviewing a new plane and I haven't done that in a while. The plane in question is yet another Volantex model, the Ranger G2. Purchase links can be found in the description below. It is a bit smaller than the Mini Ranger, sitting at 1200mm wingspan, but as it turns out, it is no less capable. I am going to do this review a little different than before, in that I am going to assemble this plane at the field prior to Maiden, just so you can can see how easy that is when you don't have to glue anything. This plane has been sitting in its box in my office for a few months, which is a pity because it actually turns out it is a darn good flyer. So let's get things going now. To complete this set you will need a 3S 1800mAh to 2200mAh battery, a radio controller with a receiver and I like to use my own screwdriver as the one supplied is pretty crap. Only modification I did here prior to taking the plane with me to the field was to replace the T-connector came with with an XT60 connector to make it compatible with my batteries. I also added an extra cable with a GST connector on it so I can add an external U-Bag to power the receiver and servos for added reliability. But first flight will be absolutely stock just to see how the electronics are working. Everything else is as it has arrived from Volantex. The cool thing about this plane is something that has been sorely missed on other Volantex models which is that it comes with a dual landing gear option. There is a built-in glider style wheel on the bottom which is more than enough for landings and would work for takeoffs from smoother surfaces. In addition there is also the option to mount the proper dual wheel landing gear just in case you want that but I think I will keep to the single wheel. Less weight and less drag in the air. So after unpacking all the parts first thing that you need to do is to install the control horns on the control surfaces. There are spares included so if you lose a screw or two in the process it will not be a problem. Use four screws on each control horn and mine the side of the control surface on which you have to mount it. It needs to be facing the servo. You need to install four of these, one on the elevator, one on the rudder and one on each aileron. Next step would be to mount the servo horns but in order to do that you would need to center those servos. A very easy way to do this is to connect all of them to the receiver and power the system up. Make sure you don't have any trims on the radio, just leave the sticks centered. While they're powered, screw on the servo horns at 90 degrees to the servo itself to make sure you will have equal travel in each direction. Once this is done don't disconnect the power yet because now you have to install the push rods and to adjust the clevises and you still need those servos to be centered. The push rods are provided with the clevises already installed but you would need to screw them in or out a bit to make them the right length in order for the control surface to be neutral or in other words not to have any offset to one side or the other. There are small rubber bands provided make sure you insert one on each push rod before installing it in the servo horn. These should be sleeved over the clevis once it has been properly adjusted and locked to keep it from opening up in flight. Once the push rods on the wings are installed you can put those aside and move on to assembling the tail. The push rods for the tail can be mounted afterwards. First you need to put the elevator and rudder together. Correct orientation of the elevator should be quite obvious. Then install the tail wheel. You have to get the wire from the tail wheel in the plastic bit over which you have mounted the rudder control horn and this can be a bit tricky to do but it is doable and make sure you will have a steerable tail wheel. Once the tail is mounted in place at the back of the plane there should be a separate bag with two screws in it. Use those to tighten it down but don't over tighten. Do it just enough for the tail to be rigid and to not move. Once this is done you can now install the tail push rods. Note that when looking at the plane from the back the right servo is for the elevator, the left one is for the rudder. Proceed procedure is the same as for the aileron push rods. Keep in mind to have the servos powered while installing the push rods in order to make sure they are centered. As long as the plane is still powered you can go ahead and mount the prop. The prop adapter is a collet type which is not the best you can get but it will get the job done. Note that many people actually install the prop reversed and then wonder why the plane doesn't have a lot of thrust. The side of the prop with the numbers and markings on it should always point in the direction of movement of the plane or in other words forward. Once mounted give it a little throttle and make sure it is spinning in the correct direction which it should but in case it doesn't
doesn't just reverse two of the three cables going between the ESC and the motor and that should sort it out. In my case the prop also needed some balancing but that is also easy to do at the field. Get a piece of electrical tape or at least that is what I had, choose a blade and stick it somewhere then throttle up and see if the vibrations have lessened or not. Move it around a bit possibly to the other blade and try to find the optimal location which gives you the least amount of vibrations and you should be good to go. One of the last things to do would be to properly balance the plane and to do that you will have to mount the wings which is really easy because of the new wing locking mechanism. Just push in the wings until you hear the click and they are ready. Don't forget to insert the wing spar before that though. Mount the receiver somewhere in there and strap in a battery. Since this is an FPV plane it will naturally be more tail heavy which ultimately allows you to put more FPV gear in the nose and have proper balance without struggling to find a place for the battery. But when flying without FPV gear you might need to move the battery quite a bit forward to balance it properly. Good news is there are markings on the wings where the balance point should be so just move the battery around until you find the spot. For true beginners the plane should be just a tad nose heavy and also keep in mind to put the hatch, lipo alarms and whatever else you will be flying with on the plane in the correct positions while balancing it. And now you're done and the plane is ready to fly, ideally in less than an hour. I wouldn't call this plane plug and play because it is not like you take it out of the box and just plug a receiver and a battery, mount the wings and are ready to go. There is some assembly to be done so at best it is an assemble and play set which is actually good because beginners will get to learn something about these models rather than just take them out of the box and fly and be convinced that this is possible because it's magical. Sort of like with the DJI stuff. So plane looks good and actually does look like a scaled down Ranger 2000 just not made out of plastic but out of EPO. And just in case you haven't noticed it already that blue neck strap I got with a buggy I am using it here because it is needed here helps a lot when you have to throw a plane in the air. Also remember to always launch a plane against the wind otherwise you are just trying to kill it. So battery charged, plane and prop balanced and it is ready for flight. Give it about 70 to 80 percent throttle and chuck it in the air and wouldn't you know it, it flies. And to my surprise it flew pretty darn good and required very little trim to get it flying straight and level. Naturally on 3S it is not the most powerful thing you have ever seen and it does not have unlimited verticals but you don't need that on a plane like this and it does indeed fly exceptionally well. There is pretty much no noticeable nose down at high throttle at least with the stock motor and prop and the more I flew it the more I loved it. And guess what came next? The tip stall test. Sadly there was none. Nada. Nothing. It would just start banking to one side and wouldn't even get close to a tip stall behavior. It might roll to one side a bit but it would immediately recover and level out and you would have to be pretty bent on holding full up elevator with no throttle to get it to do that and even so it flies and glides so well that during this stall test it took forever to lose altitude because during the glide stage it would actually gain back some of what it had lost during the slight roll. It was quite impressive how stable this thing is. As you can probably see from the onboard video even though there was wind the plane doesn't shake or roll a lot unlike some other planes we know of and the whole experience of me flying it was just absolutely positive and enjoyable especially when I know that no matter what I did with the controls this plane will not try to kill itself at least when balanced properly. I can let go of the controls and it will just glide banking slightly to the left since I have trimmed it a bit to counter the torque created by the motor which is pushing it to the right but this is normal for a plane with a single motor. As for the landings they are easy and trouble free as well it just glides in and it was such a pleasure to fly. I also noticed that it responded very well to thermals so if kept light it would let you have quite a lot of fun on a single battery. And guess what even with this grass at my flying field it still managed to do a rolling takeoff on that single wheel pretty nice. At this point I was really angry with myself for waiting so long before flying this little jewel. The assembly was easy, the wing locking mechanism is very nice and easy to use and seems reliable for the time being. In fact that same mechanism is used on the Ranger 1600 and 2000 models and will be again used on the upcoming Ranger 2400 so seems like Volantix really do like it as well. The single wheel landing gear option is very useful and creates less drag in the air than a normal landing gear and the flight 
characteristics are surprisingly good. At some point I even flew it with three cameras strapped to it at the same time, on the elevator, on the bottom, just behind the wheel and at the front and it handled all that additional and asymmetric drag like a champ. Only time it was really noticeable was when I throttled down, it would pull a bit harder to the left but that's about it, still no tip stalls. Overall I have to say that probably this is currently one of the best models out there for beginners and also one of the cheapest when you consider the plug and play version which comes with servos, ESC and the motor and just requires a radio receiver and a battery to get going. I know Volantex have a version of this that comes with a radio and some kind of stabilization though I haven't seen it sold anywhere but I have been informed that I will be receiving said receiver dash stabilization unit combo and the radio for it to test so depending on the price and the performance of these new components this might become an even better deal for beginners. Good thing is this plane also has great FPV potential with its stability and endurance even with the stock motor and prop. My longest flight was 35 minutes drawing about 2100 milliamp hours out of a 3 cell 2200 milliamp hour pack. You put that plane on the lithium ion diet and put a micro autopilot in it and it will go far and look good and if something goes wrong at least you know it will not tip stall on you some 20 kilometers away. The durability of the tail assembly still needs to be verified but unless you crash it hard I don't think turbulent wind will be able to break that unless you find yourself flying in some sort of a storm which I doubt you would do using this plane. So this about concludes this review. I really hope you have found it informative and interesting and if this is so please like share and subscribe if you haven't already. Consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates and also consider supporting me on Patreon. If you have any questions leave them in the comments and I will try to answer to the best of my knowledge. All relevant links are in the video description below and using any of them to buy anything from those websites would help support this channel, would allow me to keep doing this and you will have my eternal gratitude. I wish you happy and safe flying and until next time.